This is part of Bolton Extravaganza. If you are not a fan of theory videos, we're heading back to history videos soon. Today, let's talk about five crazy theories related to House Bolton. These are legitimate theories created by others, and while I respect the effort they've put into them and the creativity, I don't think they will happen or don't believe them 100%. However, I like them so much, I wanted to share them and see what you think. So here are five Bolton theories that I liked, but maybe don't completely believe. Number one, Roos will kill all the Freys to placate the North. This theory believes that Roos is seeking to get rid of the Freys so that he can pacify the North, earn their loyalty, and maintain rule there. Ridding himself of the Freys would help on multiple fronts. There isn't a lot of food, and being rid of them means less mouths to feed. Roos just needs the twins, not the Freys, and he believes them to be an unreliable ally. This theory states that killing the Freys will earn the Bolton's legitimacy as a house that has avenged the Starks and that the Northmen would rather prepare for war than continue to fight if they know the Starks have been avenged through the Freys' death. Bonus, if fake Arya becomes pregnant with a little Bolton baby. Lastly, this theory states that the person that becomes the new head of the Lannister family will not object to the Frey army being gone, the twins secured, and the North pacified. Why I don't personally believe this theory. The Boltons are not going to pacify the North through killing the Freys. The North is very aware of the Boltons' hand in the Red Wedding, or a number of them greatly suspect their involvement. Even if news doesn't travel as well in their world, think about it. Roos is pretty much the only Northman that reap rewards from the Red Wedding. Ramsay was legitimized, and Roos became the Warden of the North. How did all his men survive that wedding? Let's not forget some Stark loyal people that were at the wedding are still alive. They better make sure they kill them too. We also have seen the deep hate some of the Northerners have for the Boltons. They aren't stupid. They haven't forgotten. Killing the phrase will only make the Boltons look that much more treacherous to the Northmen, and remove more of their allies. Add on to that, fake Arya was not treated gently by Ramsay, adding more dislike. Well, Ramsay in general isn't helping House Bolton win hearts, and honestly is giving the Northmen more reasons not to forgive. I like the idea of the phrase being cut down, but Roos should know that this isn't going to get him brownie points and the key to everyone's support. However, if you believe this could redeem Roos enough for the North to truly accept his rule and not try to screw him over in the end, let me know. Number two. This next theory involves some very heavy speculation and guesswork, which is always good fun. The shortened version? Everything Roos does, it is to punish Ramsay. This theory states Roos is in for the long haul on getting vengeance on Ramsay for murdering Domeric, Roos's one-time heir and beloved son. Roos knew when he participated in the Red Wedding that the Northern Houses would never truly unite and follow him, and this was all part of his plan. Roos loved Domeric, was proud of his horse riding skills and potential success in the list, his interest in histories, and how well he got along with others. He would have made a fine heir. Then Ramsay, his bastard that had done nothing but trouble him as Ramsay's mother kept making demands, kills that man. This act left Ramsay, a man that could never compare to Domeric, as the only potential heir Roos had. Roos hates kinslaying. He mentions this to Theon, so he cannot openly kill Ramsay in reprisal. He couldn't do it now, and he couldn't do it back when Ramsay's mother presented Ramsay to Roos, and he saw his eyes that looked just like his. So why didn't Roos just hand Ramsay over to Ned Stark to seek justice for his heir's death? That would be admitting who Ramsay was, and Roos went out of his way to make sure Ramsay's mom kept her mouth shut about it. Practicing Lord's Rite a first night is not something Ned would have been happy about. But the people that believe this theory state that isn't the true reason Roos didn't turn Ramsay over to Ned. It was because Roos wanted to make sure Ramsay suffered for what he took from Roos. Ramsay has nothing. He's a bastard. Roos killing him wouldn't be harsh enough. The best quote I've read from someone trying to explain this theory is, A lord's fall is harder than a peasant's fall. How do you make his death crueler? Give the boy everything he wanted. Give him the reason he wanted Domeric dead, to be Roos's heir. Roos legitimized him, took away the thing Ramsay hated most, being a bastard. Roos makes Ramsay his heir, letting him know he shall one day inherit the Dreadfort and be Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. He may have told Reek that he knows Ramsay will kill any of his heirs and gives an air of not caring to bait Ramsay into thinking his rule is secure and his father doesn't want to replace him. Continuing on, Roos could use Ramsay as a scapegoat, blaming all the terrible things done on him. Or Roos could wait for Ramsay to get in trouble, such as captured or stuck in a siege. Then Roos refuses to help him, allowing Ramsay to be killed by someone else's hand, avoiding kinslaying, and destroying Ramsay's dreams of having everything. Roos sires a baby by Walda Frey, makes the child his heir, and moves on after avenging his fallen son. 
I like this theory because it means we see Ramsay suffer, and we know Roos has been accused of treating people as his playthings and for his own amusement, his bastard included. However, I don't think Roos kept Ramsay around for this long con. Roos is a sick man, but this seems like an attempt to try to explain the terrible, short-sighted plans Roos has made in the books. A multi-year con just to get revenge on Ramsay? Mm. Also, like I said before in the video, there is a very small chance the North accepts Ramsay as a scapegoat and moves on while loving Roos. Number three, this next theory I actually really, really like. It states that the reason the Boltons started flaying people was not because they're sadistic monsters, but as a means to survive. When the Starks, a family with the ability to warg and skin change, began the conquest of the North, the Boltons wanted to stop them. They may have seen the upper hand the Starks' abilities gave them. The Boltons could have flayed them for two reasons. One, in an attempt to copy the magical ability. Perhaps they thought wearing their skin might give them this ability. The other thought is they skinned them as a punishment. The Starks were taking their land, and they wanted to strike back. When they captured a skin changer, they would keep him alive while flaying him. The skin changer would be forced into another animal's body to escape the pain, but always be forced to come back in their body, where they would experience immense displeasure. Finally, they would have to choose to die in their own body or go into an animal's, where they would lose themselves anyways. Further psychological torture? Oh, you can warg into animals? We can too, by wearing your men's skin. Isn't this a fun trick we learned? I like this theory because when George R. R. Martin was asked if being a warg ran in the Stark family, he responded, I don't think this is necessarily a Stark ability, though all the children have it to one extent or another. This could mean that it isn't heavy in the Stark family, such as it only pops up every few hundred years, and or that it isn't exclusive to the Stark line, meaning that other families could have it too in the North. This could mean the Boltons didn't flay just Stark work skin changers to get their abilities, but maybe other families as well. And they decided to stick with the flayed man. Our blades are sharp. A flayed man holds no secrets. A terrifying sigil to instill fear in other warg skin changers trying to take their land and make them bow. Why I don't think this is the case, I actually believe this is too cool of a House Bolton sigil origin story to be true. Well, if you think flame people is cool. But the idea that they were battling warg skin changers and adopted flame in their house sigil to combat this might be a bit far. Doesn't it seem more likely that they flayed enemies to earn a scary reputation and intimidate other houses? Wouldn't you tremble at the thought of going against a house that flays people? Even the name the Dreadfort was probably chosen to strike fear in the hearts of people. Doesn't that sound more reasonable than some epic magic battle and trying to steal skin-changing abilities? Who am I kidding? We have zombies, dragons, necromancy, and more. I'm halfway on board on this theory. Why do you think this theory is or isn't true? Do you think the Boltons flay people because they wanted the wargs, skin changers, magic abilities, or they did it for intimidation? Number four, this next one is absolutely crazy, and I sort of love it for that. This theory presents a case that Ramsay had three reeks, not two. So besides the original reek and Theon, who was the third reek? Domeric, Roose Bolton's son and heir. I told you, crazy. The theory is that Ramsay poisoned Domeric, giving him the sickness of the bowels and making it appear that he died. But instead, Ramsay broke Domeric down and transformed him into his new reek. How did people not notice Domeric's missing body? Ramsay killed the original reek and used his body to appear as Domeric, making people believe that Domeric was reek. If Domeric was poisoned and had sickness of the bowels, he would smell terrible like the original reek did. As for the original Reek, no one would want to get close enough to him to confirm that that was Domeric, with how terrible the smell was. Eventually, Domeric Reek is killed during the switcheroo, and Theon becomes the third Reek. How people that believe this theory justify it? Ramsay was insanely jealous of Domeric being his father's heir. Ramsay hated being a bastard and had his mother constantly whispering in his ear about his rights. Taking those rights from Domeric and making him suffer wouldn't be above Ramsay. We know Ramsay enjoys torturing people and gets pleasure from their pain. We've seen Ramsay break down a lord before, Theon. And if Ramsay enjoys raping and killing, he's not above killing his original pet to get a new one, Domeric, a man that had everything he wanted. Why I don't believe this theory, plot holes, and tons of guessing. No one, not even a maester, got close enough to the dead original reek to confirm it was Domeric. The smell was atrocious, but really, I find it very hard to believe a maester wouldn't have verified it was Domeric and been with him in the end. How stealthily did Ramsay switch out the two bodies? Also, while this would definitely show how sick and twisted Ramsay is, I don't think we need more examples. Unless Ramsay comes out and throws what he did in Roos's face, why would this have any relevance? What do you think? Ramsay changing Domeric into one of his reeks? Possible or crazy? And finally, number five. Roos was never loyal to the Starks and always working to destroy them. 
The Boltons and Starks have a very long history of hate towards each other, and it's suspected the Boltons never truly warmed to their Stark overlords. In the House Bolton history video released a bit ago, I talked about the Boltons rising up in rebellion even after the Starks successfully conquered and controlled the North. They even joined up with a cadet branch of the Starks in one rebellion. Roose Bolton would know of the bad blood between his family and the Starks, and maybe was raised to continue fostering those feelings of hatred. This theory goes on to state that Roose has always been seeking to undermine the Starks. The earliest example of this was during Robert's rebellion at the Trident, when Roose urged Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon to cut Sir Barristan Selmy's throat. Why did he suggest this? Roos knew that the realm would be pissed if Sir Barristan had his throat cut like an animal after the battle. Barristan was greatly respected through the Seven Kingdoms. If his throat would have been slit, many people would have viewed it as dishonorable. Worse, some could have seen that the old king, Ares II, unjustly killing nobles, and that Robert Baratheon, the new king, was now killing lords with no trial or cause. That might have created fear that they were trading one tyrant for another. Given Roos knows Ned's opinion on the man who passes the judgment must swing the sword, some believe he knew it would be Ned that would do the deed. Roos would make sure he had no hand in the killing so that while Ned's reputation would take a dive, Roos's would stay the same. Moving forward, when Ned is imprisoned and Rob Stark calls his banners, Roos and his men answer. He couldn't dishonor Ned, but he could try again with Rob. Catelyn warns Rob that he cannot afford to appear indecisive in front of men like Roos Bolton. These are his bannermen, not his friends. Catelyn already knew the danger the Boltons presented to their house. This theory suggests Roos joined Rob's cause because A, he couldn't not join and appear cowardly and an open traitor. Roos wanted the support of the North and reduced standing could hurt him. And B, he joined Rob's cause to get more power and men to command. Roos was very eager to take command. He finally got his wish when he was given control of the Northern Foot. We see Roos march overnight to confront the Lannisters in the south instead of standing and waiting to make sure Tywin Lannister didn't cross the Trident or move north to Moat Caelan. Why did he rush to battle the Lannisters instead of holding? 1. Defeating Tywin Lannister would win Roos a lot of glory. 2. If Roos lost, the casualties came from other banners, not Roos' own. So those that might oppose any future rebellion plans he had would be cut down while his own men stayed strong. We remember that Tyrion doesn't notice Roos' own banners in the battle. Some believe Roos kept his host in the rear as a reserve, and then took his backstabbing to a whole new level. He had his men fire arrows on the Stark Loyalists and Lannister army alike. A flight of arrows descended on them. Where they came from, he could not say, but they fell on Stark and Lannister alike. Tywin may have been cruel enough to fire on his own men, but some believe it was the archers of the Dreadfort that were firing those arrows. This would take out both Lannisters and Stark Loyalists while maintaining his own men and their reputation. This theory takes the tinfoil a bit further, stating that Roos probably wanted to lose the battle intentionally. But if he didn't, it didn't matter. Winning the battle meant glory, and losing meant the elimination of Stark Loyalists. Roos would continue strengthening the loyalty of some of his banner lords while sacrificing those bannermen and banner lords that were loyal to the Starks. So we have Roos, trying to undermine Ned Stark during Robert's Rebellion, and then trying to undermine Rob Stark during the War of the Five Kings by reducing his combat strength and power. Though Roos would later turn to the Lannisters, this theory doesn't believe he was always working for them, but believes Roos was always disloyal to the Starks and seeking to rid the North of them, or take their position. So why don't I necessarily believe this theory? Honestly, it's hard to hate this theory. The Boltons do have a long history of dislike for the Starks, but I don't believe Roos was trying to destroy them from the beginning. Especially at the Trident, I don't think Roos was thinking of ruining Ned's reputation. There may have been two reasons Roos wanted Ser Barristan's throat slit. Because he's a cruel bastard, and to see what kind of lord his new king, Robert, would be. However, the idea that Roos was always some agent of chaos is interesting. The case for Roos killing off Stark loyalists at the Battle of the Green Fork is strong. George R. R. Martin mentioned that Roos was hedging his bets. If he loses, he has a host more loyal to him than Rob, and he can start negotiating with the Lannisters. If he wins, he's a hero. So Roos may not have been an agent of chaos from day one, but I do believe Roos quickly latched on to an opportunity when he saw Rob making dumb decisions and suspected this war wasn't going to go well for Rob. Cold, cunning, and clever. Serve your overlord until you see an appealing opportunity to jump ship and gain power, while getting rid of your house's longtime enemy. Alright, those were five Bolton-related theories I don't 100% support, but I really, really like and loved reading and hearing about. What are your thoughts on each one? Which one is most likely to be true? Now that we've gotten some theory videos out of the way, I'm mixing in more history. We're almost through with the Boltons if you hate them with your heart of hearts. New Game of Thrones and Song of Ice and Fire videos every Sunday and Wednesday, and sometimes other days besides that, Star Wars, comics, and Walking Dead videos.